Mike Bowman, Voice of America. Uh, for Dr. Kohut, is there anything in your research that suggests the sustainability of President Obama's personal popularity? Or, or maybe he's enjoying a honeymoon period on the world stage similar to the one that he's enjoyed at home? No, uh, there's no, there's nothing here that gives an indication of what, uh, what the future will hold. Uh, I think the one thing that would argue that uh, uh, the, these numbers are pretty robust, or opinions about him are pretty robust, is how uh, consistently positive people are and the way his personal approval ratings and confidence in him has translated into uh, changed opinions about the United States. I would argue that this is a pretty powerful set of perceptions, which isn't to say that they're not going to change. We just can't. Uh, we, we just can't pr pr predict the future. Uh, it's very much like uh, opinions about him domestically. Uh, his approval ratings continue, strong overall approval ratings continue, even in the face of declining uh, uh, appro approval ratings with regard to specific issues. Uh, but, you know, there's no, there's no, no magic formula in this, uh, in this survey that says, uh, well, he can take one hit, two hits, three hits, but uh, the numbers are pretty strong and they're pretty consistently strong internally. Yeah. Uh, Mitch Potter, the Toronto Star newspaper. I'm just curious to know if the panelists think, is, is there a point where you're too popular internationally? Is there any downside domestically to Barack Obama in uh, some of the nearly stratospheric numbers we see in Western Europe, which unless I'm misreading them, seem to suggest he's more popular there than he is in his overall approval ratings here in the United States? Well, uh, given how, given the fact that, um, that uh, the public has long saw uh, an important objective of American foreign policy to restore the image of the United States all around the world, uh, I don't think in a general sense you can expect that there's a lot of danger here and also the fact that his foreign affairs ratings are even better than his domestic ratings. I'm sure though that some of the strong critics of the Bush uh, of, of the uh, Obama administration will, will say there, see, uh, but that's not, a, that's not a widespread point of view. Any other comment? I, I think that people, I, I know Senator Danforth will say it's nice to be popular. It is nice to be popular. Uh, and I think that uh, people feel better if we are liked. Um, you know, it's a, Americans now don't have to say they're from Canada when they travel around. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the bottom line is ultimately he will be judged a lot on how much attention he pays to domestic policy. Um, and so I think that that is important, and the two go together. And a lot of the issues that are domestic policy issues, such as energy, ultimately have a foreign policy uh, dimension, but um, they go together. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's nice to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, he, uh, I think President Obama is an enormously attractive person and a, a very, very gifted politician, very, very able. Uh, I think that most Americans, for now, like the idea of our president being popular in the world and like the idea of, of our country being better thought of in the world. However, um, the number one responsibility of, of President Obama is to protect the people of the United States in a very dangerous world. And the ultimate question is going to be, how effectively is he doing that? And what steps is he taking? And how able is he to garner support from other countries to help us in that effort? Those are going to be the ultimate questions. And if he's gaining international popularity by telling people what they want to hear, and by getting very little in return, and by taking kind of an apologetic approach for the United States, I think people are going to, to really uh, judge him ultimately on, okay, are we safer because of this? 
or are we less safe because of this? Can I, can, because you've now said this a couple of times, Senator, and I have to dispute this. I think when he makes speeches abroad, he does something that I think is quite brilliant, which is to accept some responsibility for past actions that have been wrong, uh, and then say, okay, I have said that we did this wrong, but you did something wrong too. And it allows him to be able to get at the point that others have responsibility for that particular action. I think it is a, a, a lot of things that people do in their lives in is because I think the U.S. did do some things wrong. And the sign of a really great country and a great leader is to say, we didn't do this right, instead of saying everything we've done is brilliant. So I don't accept the fact that he goes abroad to apologize. He goes abroad and tells the truth. And I think that's very important. In the back, sir. Um, Rima Hamdi with Russia Today uh, News for the Arabic Service. The higher ratings of Obama and the U.S. administration in general translates, in the Muslim world, translates into a drop in uh, Israel. This, is, this sounds like a hard game to play. How do you think Obama is going to go about it? To whom would you like to address that okay. question? To? Well, I, I think that um, what President Obama has said and is evident in the uh, work of Senator Mitchell is that the United States is going to have a much more active role in trying to bring about the Israeli uh, Palestinian uh, peace process and to um, not kind of, um, you know, I, I think there was a very interesting roadmap that President Bush put out, but they never took it out of the glove compartment. And so the bottom line is that President Obama and Senator Mitchell and Secretary Clinton are going to be much more actively involved. What happened is that President Obama, and it goes to the point of his speeches, in Cairo, uh, he gave a very important speech in which he um, made clear uh, what we needed to do vis-a-vis -vis the Muslim world, that the Muslim world, by the way, I hate that term because it's not monolithic, uh, but I think that there had, that things that had to happen, he also made clear about the freezing of the settlements. And so he is pointing out that the role the U.S. can play is to bring the parties together on a very, very difficult set of issues. One last question here. Hi, Amanda DeBard with The Washington Times. Could you put the environmental data into perspective as far as moving forward with international climate discussions? To whom are you? Well, I, I think what, what this survey shows is that there's a good deal of, of support for dealing with the environment and dealing with global uh, climate change specifically. Um, I was surprised uh, that the numbers uh, did not uh, decline markedly when we asked people about uh, taking steps to protect the environment, uh, e even if it leads to less economic growth and some job loss. Um, those numbers held up pretty well at a time when people are very concerned about jobs and very concerned about their economies. There was more concern about prices, and so that's obviously one of, one of, one of the pressure points uh, in, in, in consideration of, of policy and w whether people will, will see uh, global, uh, uh, dealing with global climate change as something that's going to drive up um, their prices at a time in which uh, their currencies, dollars or whatever their currencies are, are very stretched. Uh, it's certainly the expectation that the United States is going to uh, is going to take, uh, take steps uh, to deal with this issue is very cl clearly apparent both uh, uh, around the world and even to a certain extent in the United States or to a fair degree in the United States.